but it was nice to hear about the first time my husband masturbated and that. No, that's know, not what the story brother, was about. And that's then my brother, you know, talking about. to him about it too and hearing that my grandpa gave him <laughs> pornography. It was like cool <laughs> for me and this is a good it's day cool. off for me. I know you'll know where we were when I know you'll know where we were when Hello and welcome to Where We Were When, a podcast where we look back at the most memorable movie-going experiences of our youth and eat candy. Justin's already <laughs> laughing. Yeah, this is I am. I am. Level I, of it, no, let, let, me, let me just let me, let me just fit it. Let me just finish the thought, Zeb. Okay, like you're not even on screen yet. Um, <laughs> well, now he is. <laughs> well, he might be. Who knows? Ta-da, Catherine, don't put him Zeb on screen. Wells is <laughs> that? Don't, don't put oh, him on screen until we introduce so. I know. experiences of our youth and eat candy. Justin, it's going to be a wild one. Happy it's going to oh, be man. wild, I can tell. This is going to be a this is going to be a rough night. The, the okay. change the change is- in energy since I was here last. <laughs> it's like it's gone from you two trying to like put on such a show oh. and be so professional. And now Justin, we can barely get him to talk into the mic. Oh my god. Hey. I okay, so that's the guest. Zeb Wells, everybody. Thank you so much Jesus. for the notes right off the bat. I know you know where we were when I know you know where we were when Hello and welcome to Where We Were When podcast where we look back at the most memorable movie going experiences of our youth and eat candy. Hi, I'm your host, Heidi Gardner, and I'm joined as always by my brother, Justin (laughs) Gardner. You're laughing. I'm laughing because I, the, what we have just experienced over the course of the past 10 minutes, um, can only be described as, um, well, I mean, we're pros, we're pros at this by now, but Zeb Wells is on the show and for whatever reason, shit starts breaking. So, yes. um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna c- combine the, third, the two. The two things was, are completely related. Yes, that was the third time I've done the intro. The first time I was laughed at by Justin because something I believe Zeb was doing, and then immediately Zeb tore into both of us about how the first time he was on the show, we were such being so professional. Immediately, being on such a show. Yeah. And then now, I think he was about to be like, and now you guys suck and are way too comfortable. And then guys, I had what do- are you doing? What are you doing? What's <laughs> then, going on? Then I, I can't hear it. Justin. Yes. God damn it. I introed it a second time. He tore into us <clears> again. <throat> so ladies didn't and gentlemen. Didn't even let us finish. <laughs> didn't even let us finish the intro. Forgot that he, we were doing an intro. Yeah, and now Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, Zeb Wells. Zeb Wells is back. He's back. Yeah, I Jesus. learned my lesson. Did you see the? I like gave you guys your space. <laughs> mm-hmm. What are your notes? I'm sure there's notes coming. <laughs> yeah, what, I'm just well, saying. How that? I'm just saying, and maybe you can roll the clip when we start this. But I just, <laughs> in a good way, you guys are much calmer and less <laughs> professional than you were the first time that I did the show. What was oh, I doing the hat. first time you did it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to. No, no, no. Let's get these notes. I don't want to Let's get these notes. Because we have it. Zeb, we can pull it You need it up. to tell your wife. Well, Justin what she needs had to be one doing foot better. out the door. I think we can both admit that. Like, he he wants out. He does not want to be here. He wants to do a mini. He, he said the word mini episode <laughs> 30 times in just waiting for us. I thought that's what it was. On. I, I, don't know. I, I thought, thought that's what it was. It was a mini episode. Mini. It was called a mini episode. In the email the that we sent out. The first time I was on, okay. it was a test episode, and you guys dangled that carrot in front of me 
Like, Wait, oh, didn't we man, redo it though? Maybe. Didn't might, we redo it? Be on. Did we redo the first? And now the first it's a episode? mini episode. We redid the first one of just you and I, but we of kept just us. Yeah, we, we kept, kept the we kept the Zeb one because yeah. Zeb performed it was good so well with our focus yeah. group of John and Catherine. <laughs> I, they That's like right. were ra- and he was incredible, but they were raving. But I think you know had he lowest not watched done so episode well, so far. <laughs> <laughs> there's the lowest watch well it is like it, it drops off it's basically one. like all of all of the other episodes we, we can see the analytics in the background <laughs> and with 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 uh all the other ones we have at least like 13 minutes of like average of people watch engaging down. and with zeb it's about 30 <laughs> seconds um and they so call yeah they're like oh my god no not 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 this not so this. we don't even get to the first MeUndies commercial or whatever you guys are doing. <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever that is. Whatever shell but, game you guys have going here. Yeah, so rude, got a lot. Zeb. So rude to your wife and your wife's family. <laughs> mm. uh, so what well, are we doing I mean, tonight? Nothing, nothing <laughs> different. <laughs> what are we doing tonight? I don't know. I think we're doing a we're doing a show. We're doing a podcast. Okay. We're going to talk about some movies. Yes. Not from, well, kind of from our youth, right? But not mm-hmm. really because we want to revisit a topic that we talked about last time. This is kind of like an unofficial part two, right, to your episode because you know what happened. This massive movie Dune came out. Yeah, it's re- again, this, it's not a re-release. It's a it's a brand new version. Brand yeah. new Dune, and you caused such a commotion the first time you came on here and talked about Dune. Um, you know, you made me look cool because what I learned about Dune the last time you were on was that there was a supplementary pamphlet that came with yes. the original Dune in the theater. And one of the producers on SNL, Eric Kenward, he brought up Dune the other night, and I was like, or he brought up seeing it, and I was like, Eric, do you remember the pamphlet? And he was like, oh, my God, the pamphlet. I had totally forgotten about the pamphlet. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I just looked cool. I just knew <laughs> oh, about I it. You didn't, even, you didn't even mention that, like, that was, like, part of the, the conversation on this podcast. You no, just kept I did it mention. All, you kept all the glory for yourself. No, no, I didn't. Because okay. I've never seen Dune, and I still haven't, and I haven't seen the new one. But Zeb- <laughs> so, that's great. That's great. Well, we're going to have a we're going to have a hell of a time tonight. But before we do that, we've got to get to the candy. Yeah. So get, give your little uh, horsey a carrot here. What do we have? Well, Nerds? you just pulled it out. <laughs> Are you supposed to do an intro for that, too? <laughs> yes. OK, that was Let's the take intro. It back. Let's take it back. No, you there's, can there's, do it. There's no there's no like graphic for this. This is me. So the, what this usually is, it's usually me um, finding some garbage in a package that Heidi sent me. Gotcha. I, don't I don't send good. you any of that. I send you candy. I do not send you any of the supplementary shit in the package. I sent you that. How do you know? Did you did you put this in this thing? How so do you, you know that? think someone from Amazon just puts random shit in the packages? They don't. No, I think you, you do. I think you put them in the. No, back. I don't. Okay. okay. I don't. Okay. This has an candy? expiration date of 9 11, 2022. I feel so exposed right now because obviously there's so much you're dysfunction. In, you're getting both barrels. There's you're a lot of tension barrels. in the air. I know. There's so much dysfunction. I'm putting it all out for everyone to see with my brother and my husband. The candy today is gummy. <laughs> Cluster Nerds Dungeons oh, and works. Dragons edition. What is this? <laughs> this, <laughs> chi- this childhood candy that we had? The Dungeons Shut and up. Dragons Nerd Gummy Cluster? Yeah. Shut <laughs> up. It's a, Shut up, both of I'm you. In a it's, time a new, it's a new candy. It's hot on the market and people are talking about it. And I thought it oh might my. be fun because, you know, you guys have probably, what, you Look want me to do Bitto Honey? It's good. Bitto Honey? I'd love a Bitto Honey. I would love it. Have you had a bit of honey lately? Mm. Yeah, it's, and it's great. Yeah, it's great. These I have it like work. once a year. Yeah. Do these not work? No, they work hard. They're fantastic, actually. Yeah. That's great. They oh have a God. really good nerds. Though. The nerds are small. Uh-huh. 
They're, they're not killing you with the nerds. Yeah, they're. You see how they, they kind of have a Willy Wonka thing. They look like the everlasting gobstopper yeah. a little bit. Yeah, mini nerds. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, though. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's a lot of sugar. That is hurting my teeth, like literally hurting my teeth. It makes the nerd more approachable. The nerd's not so hard. Totally. Good it's ratio like of talk- nerd to gummy. Yeah. <clears throat> these are really good. How did you hear about these? So, Do you get some sort of like candy newsletter? Well, kind of, because people at work are obsessed with candy and eating gummies. Um, and Bowen actually told me about them because Ego told him about them. And then... I feel like I saw a random one just sitting out and I picked it up and ate it. And I was like, that's good enough to buy. So, mm. Nerds so gummy just, clusters. Compliments yeah. to the chef. Yeah. Is there a reason why it's Dungeons and Dragons? No. See, that's what I can't figure out. And there's, there's nothing. There's no like. Oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. No. Okay. Unlock so. The ultimate D&D. Go ahead. Yeah, so how to redeem. So basically you have to snap a picture. You buy you buy the nerds products by March 31st, 2022. A photo of your receipt, which we can't do with qualifying purpose, and upload to nerdscandy.com DND. Um, six mini adventures leading to one ultimate D D adventure, whatever the fuck that means. That's cool. So they're trying to do trip. like a uh I don't know, like a mini game okay well here's something nostalgic um zeb weren't you a huge fan of the cherry nerd blizzard at dairy queen no that was my great grandfather you never had it oh i did have it it was good but uh, yes that was one of my last memories of him we went on a road trip to yellowstone and on the way my 80 something year old grandfather got addicted (laughs) <laughs> to cherry nerds blizzards so we'd be driving and somebody go ah, you know one of those cherry nerds blizzards would go down really nice right now and then we'd have to start looking for a dairy queen you have to and hook him up he was racking like two a day really immediately yeah oh my god at that age why, at why that not age getting right? into nerds <laughs> why not you know his teeth his yeah dentures. i think those are long did he gone. have teeth i think point? they were long gone Mm. They're long gone. Well, I love that. I love nerds. And now, because you've told me that story, when there's like a frozen yogurt place or a Dairy Queen where you can add a topping, I will put nerds in just a soft serve, and it's fantastic. Great. You love it. It it works, right? Bizarrely. Yeah. I've never had it. I've never had it. So. Well, we'll do it over the holidays. Let's do it. Can I? The thing, this is a very weird texture, these things. Mm-hmm. These nerds, uh, gummy clusters is what they are. Um, another weird, just kind of like as like a shout out to, I think it's Trolley. Didn't I send you these? The sour, bright candy corns? No, I haven't had the candy no. corns. Yeah. Candy corn that basically are sour, kind of sour gummy, but they're not gummy. They're the candy corn consistency, which Ooh. I know will throw people. Yeah, that was a find. Oh, so yeah. if you see that, <laughs> we got to try that. I wonder if we can still order it. There's probably some old packs. Probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, oh there's our cat, Cubby. Okay, um, should we talk Dune? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you want to talk Dune? Heidi can't I mean, we've talk. Done I was actually minute. gonna. Uh, you and I can talk, Dune. We've done eleven minutes on the nerds. Well, no, we haven't. We've done a little bit of fighting. We've done a little bit of catching up where we are. And I was going to ask you before I intro, Dune. Do you have anything else to say about the nerds gummy clusters or nerds in general? And you can answer no if you want. No. <laughs> okay. I think he's past it. I think Fine. he's past it. I think once he put that out there, he wanted I've been, to move on. I've, been, I've had the term mini episode. He's really mini, trying mini to control episode. the conversation. He's it's really been trying made to control clear to me that it's a mini episode. 
mini so what, what is that? 20 minutes? It's a mini so 20 minutes. I got eight <laughs> minutes left. So, you know, if we want to talk This Dune, is what I was this is what Dune. I was told. This is what I was told. So like this now This is what happened. We're doing this a whole is, hour now. We're doing a whole hour. So I'm this in. Is, I'm in it. This is what happened. Mini a mini episode, a mini sode for short, was pitched with Zeb coming back on to talk about the new Dune because he talked about the old one. And it was like, that's a great idea. John and Catherine loved the idea because they love Zeb. They think he nailed it on the first one. Well, yeah, that's, you know. They did. They definitely did. (laughs) And it's making me mad how much I know how Zeb's coming off funny now as well. I know. (laughs) But so it was pitched like that. And then I did not like come up with a guest really for tonight. And I thought, can we just do Zeb? Oh, that was the thing. It was a, uh, okay. It was like, I get let's it now. do a I mini a bit... sewed with Zeb, but make it a maxi sewed by having <laughs> Zeb talk about Dune and one more movie. So it's one I missed an email. Full I missed an email. Okay. Yeah. So I thought I was dropping in. We were going to talk Dune. And then, and then I, it was like, all right, 15 <laughs> minutes, 20 minutes and we're out. Yeah, and you were right. salivating at the start of this. You were ready to I was, get out of Yeah, there. I was I had my hat on. I was ready to go. I was like, but let's let's plow through this. Basically, but listen, we're a, here. We're yeah. here. Let's talk about Dune. Like I'm I'm okay. I'm listen. But that this is I I I love the fact that we're doing a longer episode because I don't get to spend enough time with Zeb. Um as is. I see you guys maybe like, you know, I see you hiding now pretty much every other week, but yeah. Zeb, I see maybe what five <laughs> times a year. year. So twice a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, now it's going to be four times since we're doing the second episode. So uh, let's talk yeah. about Dune. Let's get yeah. into it. Yeah. It's so, a choose your own adventure <clears throat> episode, Zeb. You can do whatever you want. I can do whatever I want. It's on me. Well, yeah. let's, well, talk let's, about not get Dune. Carried, let's not get carried away. <laughs> I think I have to accept the fact that I was very against this Dune movie for emotional reasons. Really? Um, yeah, I think well as flawed and, as the other one is. The other one no, is, is see, still a great movie, but it, I don't go alone. It's flawed. I don't go with that. I don't go that it's flawed. Okay. I know, it doesn't, I know you're it right doesn't or feel, die. It doesn't feel flawed to me because when I saw it, I hadn't dissected this book and this book hadn't become part of me. And then I went and saw how this movie uh measured up to the book. You know, I saw the movie first off of sure. a, a story told me by my dad, you know. So I saw it and that was Dune to me. I love it. And and when this came out, I thought that it looked like there was a lot of uh, Lynch's Dune in this one, as far as like the scenes they chose to go in on, which makes sense, you know, if they're both adapting the same book. But and then the world just seemed from the trailer seemed a lot more sterile. And I saw the new Blade Runner in IMAX in New York City. So it cost like thirty five dollars. And I still felt like I underpaid for that movie because it was so beautiful. Like he right. visually was so Denis great. So I had, Villeneuve. I had, yeah, I'm not going to try to say his name. Yeah. It's Denis Villeneuve. Great. Um, but I had a really high expectations <laughs> and the trailer I thought looked a little boring to me and everything seemed like the world didn't seem very lived in. Uh, so but I did want to go to the theater and see it. I wanted to see it in IMAX. I didn't get a chance to. So I just watched it in the bedroom on HBO Max, which I didn't want to do. Mm, um, you son of a bitch. I loved it. I thought it was incredible. You loved and it. I, th- I love so it. So am I the only one that's seen it in a theater? Yeah. Yeah, because I haven't oh, seen wow. it. Period. You haven't seen a period. <laughs> and you watched it in the you watched it in bed. I watched it in bed under the blankets. And I think I was with the I lights off. Bit, what at what time? No, it, it was dark out, but I had a nice okay. reading light on. Ooh. But I had headphones uh, in, which I think helped a lot. I thought okay. Okay. you were going to say you didn't like it the way that you. Just, so did I. Yeah. OK, so did I. But I, I th- think what it felt like to me is I was thinking like, why do we need another Dune? We have a Dune. Why do we need another Dune? This felt like more Dune. Why do we need another Like Dune? now I've got like just more of Dune. And 
I felt like it felt like Dune to me. It felt like whatever I was getting off of that first movie that I liked, it seems like it seems like Lynch and Dennis both got the same thing out of Dune because it feels like they're both telling the same story with the same feeling. I really liked it. Do you know now, something I don't know? Do you know Dennis? Or because I've always I'm heard not gonna, Denis. I don't know how to say his last name. Denis. Denis. You said Dennis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Denis. I okay. just want to make sure that we're we're pronouncing people's names right. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> And that he doesn't Denny. prefer De- Dennis. Dennis and Dennis. <laughs> Dennis Venezuela. I'm going to call him DV. <laughs> DV. I think that's probably safe, but Denis. Now, Zeb, I remember when you were on here last, you talked about being. So, how old were you the first Dune that when you saw it with your dad? You were like nine. Seven or, years old. Seven years old. Okay. And what your year dad. Was that? was that 84? 84, yeah. 84, okay. Your dad had hyped it so much to you. It was so sweet. He told you all about it. And I remember you saying when you saw the movie, you were kind of shocked that everything he told you wasn't in it. Yeah. You know, so were there things that you saw in this version of Dune that you remember your dad telling you about that like aren't in the first one or I can't I can't quite remember what was what I yeah, I do think that and maybe it's just because I've internalized the first Dune movie so much. There was extra stuff in this movie that I didn't, you know, especially towards the end. I think towards the end, he may, he was able to keep more of the stuff, which is really the middle of the story because it's two movies now. And yeah, I don't know. I just have to say that I think Lynch did a really good job. If you had to make Dune into a two hour film. There was just a lot of smart decisions made. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because you were breaking down Dune and Justin just took a sip from what looks to me like a gallon of I know. It's not, it's, it's not I would, respectable I would. and it's not acceptable. And it looked like he's doing a paid ad for Fresca. Not this time. Because of just the tilt, the way the label <laughs> was positioned. He's drinking a two liter. Yes. Why? This is a two liter. And he's because it's all I've got. It's all I've got. And I just and I I, I find and it. And we've had refreshing. Justin and I have had some talks on the show about him doing like product or ad placement for like Butterfinger and stuff like that. And so I'm just worried that. He DM'd Fresca and was like, I can get you guys on where we were well, when podcast. And that's what I'm talking about. Well, I can. It seemed like in my I first don't even appearance, need- you guys were on it. And now I barely feel listened to. You I'm are really listening to. to you. You are, Zeb. What that is. is can, I, voice- can I respond to everything that he just said? Yes. <laughs> because because Heidi, Heidi, you took us sort of like off this path. I took a drink of like a delicious grapefruit beverage fresca that's um, an which ad. is available <laughs> exactly. all over the country at, <clears throat> exactly. in a grocery store near you exactly um, that's an but ad. i want zeb i want to respond to what you're saying because um i agree like like the it's there's it's famous famously like dune was this movie that was trying to get made again and again and then um alejandro Hodorowski, uh, put together this like amazing unmade movie and eventually like did all this pre-pro and went to the studio executives and they're like, okay, well we're going to, you know, it's like, it's, you know, w- what's your vision? Oh, it needs to be a 14 hour movie. And they're like, okay, well, goodbye. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then they brought on, they brought on um, Lynch and he definitely wanted to make something that was longer, but they basically said, you have to do it in two hours. Right. Yeah. And how do you make Dune in two hours? Right. I think that's one of the reasons why I don't remember exactly the cuts that that uh, were made, but I think that's one of the reasons why people consider it a it's a it's a good movie, but it's flawed, right? And with this one, I don't. There's there's been all this speculation about whether or not like they're going to do a part two. Of course, they're going to do a part two. I mean, come on, they're not going to like you know not do the second part of this movie. So that's already been greenlit, and so he knew. Right. And so like you're going to get basically get like a five hour movie. 
right? Something yeah. that was closer to Hodorowski's. And I definitely agree that like, I mean, it's all up there on the screen, right? There's the, I think that they're, they're <clears throat> on this podcast, we talk about the movies, right? That we remember in our youth. And I'm going to get a little snooty for a second, but I think that there's a difference between like a movie <clears throat> and then you've got like films and then you have cinema, right? And Dune, this, especially this Dune, I'm sure back in the day, like if I were to watch that, I don't think I've ever actually seen it on the big screen, Dune. I don't think I have. Um, but this was cinematic to the nth sure. degree. Yeah. It was gorgeous. It had a sense of landscape. It had a sense of um, all of the shots were, you knew that they were well, <clears throat> extremely, extraordinarily considered. Um, and I think the thing with this was the difference between the two is if I were to like compare the two, um, the production design felt just so much more real in this one. The other one felt really showy. Um, and it felt very, uh, it felt very regal. Whereas this one felt more like it was grounded in maybe it's more a present day, uh, uh, vibe on on what the you know politically what dune is supposed to be about it's you know just about, about the politics there's just some very clear like um ties to oil and you know and the middle east and you know those types of things right um but um you think that it's an extension of that like you you're saying that you felt like extension but i definitely feel like they're, they're definitely like two separate vibes to me yeah, it's hard to sum up what I mean, but it, I mean something. They're definitely two different movies. And yeah, yeah I, I get what you're saying. I felt like Lynch's Dune, the world felt just slightly more lived in than absolutely this. Other, this felt a, yeah, this felt a it little felt kind of more, empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Felt a yeah. little empty. Like there weren't a lot while of being around. beautiful. So kind of more alien. Um, more alien and more Blade Runner, to be honest with you. Yeah. It felt more like like it was like Blade Runner because Dune is set in our sort of like Earth timeline. Like Earth happens and then like Dune happens way later, right? Because, you know, it's not some other other universe from what I remember. Yeah, yeah, it you is. Know, this it's is in the future. This is yeah. humans in the future, right? So it almost feels like it's like past Blade Runner. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like Blade Runner yeah, is sure. almost a prequel to Dune in some way, like you could view it as that, you know? Um, and Dune is just this very, uh, I mean, when you're talking, gosh, it's just, it's, it's dense, you know? And there's a lot of layers there and there's a yeah, lot of politics there. Interesting that this one started, <laughs> you know, he's taking five hours to tell this story that Lynch had to tell, but this one still opens with an information dump. Yep. Like, it's like, you just yep. can't you have get to. away from it. Yeah. This movie is, you have to like give people a glossary. You have to let them know what's going on. Um, but yes, the, the vibes are different, but I don't know. I feel like they make me feel the same way. So I don't know how to say that the way I mean it, but it feels mm -hmm. like whatever Lynch was geeking out on DV was geeking out on it and their, their aesthetics took them in a different way, but they're still right. telling the same story. And what's important, to, what's important about Dune seems to be the same to both of them. Yeah. I think that, uh, uh, um, Lynch is very interested in the grotesque. Um, I think that he sort of fetishizes the grotesqueness a lot. Um, and especially with, you know, Baron Harkonnen and, uh, um, well, I think the, the, the intro, yeah, the intro to Baron Harkonnen in Lynch's Dune is one of the most genius, like encapsulations of evil. Like, Hey, I want to show you how disturbing and evil this person is. Like it would be hard to do that, to do that any better than he did it. I think in this new Dune, it's still good and you still get that vibe, but it's a very kind of understated vibe you get off of the Baron. You kind of know how bad he is, but he Lynch's seems Dune, smarter. Like, 
I wouldn't say smarter. Not not as he doesn't seem as evil. He just seems like he oh smarter. Knows yes, yes, exactly. yes. Exactly right. Yeah, smarter. He just knows how the yeah. game's played, and so he yeah. doesn't. He'll make any promise to anybody, and he knows that like it doesn't matter. It's just right. about power. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And where the Baron you know. and Lynch's dude was sort of like pulled along by his desires and like, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to, to just spit in Lady Jessica's face, you know, like that was really exciting to him. It was, yeah, it's a little creepier, dumber version of evil, a little more um, base. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obvious, right? Like, oh, this guy's evil. Right. Yeah. Whereas, like, for me, like, Denise's version was like, uh, and it was uh, still in Skarsgård, I believe plays the baron in this one um it's just tired you know like weary but yeah. just still hungry for power yeah yeah right still doing his thing like just you know like whereas these whereas um uh i think it was i think it was was it sting's character who came in and was like you know angry um you know this time it's it's played by dave batista coming in and talking about how like they basically got kicked off this planet yeah arrakis um and you know baron's just chilling <laughs> he doesn't get he doesn't get angry you yeah. know he doesn't raise his voice he's just very methodically you know talking like this and you know and it's just it's he's just he just knows what's going to happen sort of before it happens yeah right you can just all see it, and it's 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 a really really chilling version of it, and it's very dark, and it's very alien like, like you're saying. It's very it's much more Geiger. It feels much more like yeah yeah a Geiger um, version. Yeah, for of sure. Yeah, but I was like just super happy, just super happy watching it. It felt like the music is different than the Dune music, but I don't know, it existed in the same space to me. Like it still evoked the same feelings. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it just feels like, like, I guess some, to sum it up again, it feels like I, I got more Dune instead of another Dune. It's just more of the stuff I love. Who did the music? Anybody know? I don't know. I was Hans, Hans Zimmer, I think. Oh. Uh, for one the, of those, the new one? I'm pretty sure. Um, I can check here. No, Toto. Yeah, because Toto did yeah, the first that's one. That's a great album. Because you're a fan of the album, Heidi. I used to yes. put that on. I used to put the album on. That's right. And I liked it a lot. And one of the songs is very motivational, I thought. Maybe the main theme. That's Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Well, yeah, it's great. Well, yeah, so it's, it was a, it was a, it's a solid film. Uh, See it on the big screen if you can. I mean, Jesus, you know, it's and I mean, Zab, I know that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of getting, you know, I don't know how open New York is. Um, I think you can just, you can go to movies. Everything's yeah. open, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't want to tell <laughs> Zab this because we had to do the podcast tonight at eight o'clock, but yeah. work did rent out a theater tonight to watch Dune. What? <laughs> screening was at six and we wouldn't have gotten back home in time are and you I'm kidding whoa. me <laughs> oh we should have moved this what are you talking what heidi come on why is that we heidi should've... who's the, who's the guest next week well they just did it for fun no they just did it for it was just for fun oh man so everyone's gonna be talking it's Dune se- tomorrow it's it's semi i, mean, Lou, I don't know right? how many it's semi lou yeah, but it right. yeah, it had nothing to do with um uh with um with the guest. Simi. Just yeah. Just fans yeah. of cinema. Yeah. Fans of cinema that you could have been, you could have seen and discussed with all of these other fans of cinema, but Heidi but maybe when the when the new Heidi one Dune comes blocked out. you. She did. Yeah. But maybe when the when new, the new one, one comes out, comes I can out see them both. both of them. Yeah, yeah, that's back what I back. want. You that's know that the they're going to have some sort of like IMAX five hour extravaganza, right? And then you, I'll finally watch. You're going to sit through five hours of Dune. I you should make her watch the, the first Dune. one yeah. and then the other ones. 
I you don't want no no Heidi, you don't want all the Dune. There's a lot of Dune. Okay. You just want the Dune movies. Because there's like the Dune Chronicles. Actually, James McAvoy, I think, is in like a uh, uh, sci fi uh made for sci fi made channel, for sci fi yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Early, early on in, in his career. Kind of strange. Yeah. Well, sorry, Zeb. That's okay. I, I enjoyed my experience. Yeah. I, it's it's great when a movie <laughs> Doesn't need, you know, it was good enough that it just took me away. Like I felt like it was a very enjoyable and that's my favorite when a movie movies are that good. When they, they just, take you away. They, they suck you in and you're going to watch it no matter what's going on. Now, do you have another movie that you want to talk about that you that maybe gave you a similar experience that sucked you in a, another nostalgic film? Because like we said, because <laughs> we just, haven't talked about it. Can this you come was, up with one off the top of your fucking head? This was supposed to be a mini sode, but if you know, choose your own adventure. We can make it. Well, are you speaking of things sucking you in? Because I was just on a plane ride, and someone in front of me had this movie going, and it reminded me of a similar situation, and that is uh, a little filmmaker named Stanley Kubrick and mm. Full Metal Jacket, Full and. Metal Jacket. I have a memory of me and my dad. Again, it's me and my dad. I, I don't know how old I was. I bet I was older. I was like 13. Oh, no, I know. I know how old I was. I was like 13. And we. Because it was 87, a, wasn't it? A father. No, 13 it would be 1990. Is when. Oh, Full well, this wasn't in the theater. In it wasn't in the theater. Oh, gotcha. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha. we. We're going on a father-son trip. I think we might have gone to Yellowstone, but this was a different trip. We went on a big, long road trip for like a week. And we were in a hotel, and we were leaving to go get something to eat. And my dad had the TV, and he just was flipping the channels. And we were literally on our way out mm. the door. And he flips it to Full Metal Jacket, and it's starting that basic training scene. And... There was just no leaving the hotel. Like you couldn't <laughs> pull yourself away from that scene. And it, it, I think it's like half the movie. It's like 45 minutes of the film. It's a and lot. And both of us. Yeah, it just keeps going. And you're, you were expecting it to come to some sort of conclusion or earlier. But it just it, it, it's like it just settles in and you just can't stop watching. There's something engaging about that drill sergeant screaming at everyone. You're seeing a world that you haven't seen before. Yeah, you're seeing an actor you've never seen before. You're seeing uh, a slice of reality that you haven't experienced. None of those actors, right? I don't think any of those actors had been in anything. Matthew Modine, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I, you don't know any of the actors. And what's cool is like you don't, they don't spend a lot of time like telling you who those characters are. You no. just are sort of learning it. And it doesn't even matter because what you're watching is so compelling. Uh, and that was like just one of my favorite memories because it's just fun to see things that are undeniable. Like you don't have to think mm -hmm. about it. You don't have to ask yourself why you, know, why you like that or is that, is that good or is that bad? If something sucks you in like that, you just know that it's good. Like, that's what every movie is trying to do. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that movie did it so hard, so well. And then it did it so well that, you know, I, I, I can barely remember the second half of that movie. And every time I watch it, you almost instantly forget the second half of the movie. Because it's just it can't keep up with that first half. It's and tough. So that was I mean, just, it's that like was a fun. That was a fun memory of like me and my dad, like next to each other, being glued <laughs> to the television set. Both of us hungry, both of us knowing we had to leave, but neither of us able to turn the television off. Like that's that's like badass filmmaking there. So you watched the whole thing well, up until the end the of the um, the end of the basic training. The basic and, training. Yeah, okay, and then gotcha. then we were like, okay, well we'll finish that. We'll finish that later. We could finally leave. You know, because that comes. And you had you seen it or had close. you not seen it? Not I had not seen it. I had no so idea. So you're just like, that's a movie. That's yeah. a movie. And unto like, again, itself. I didn't, we can yeah. go see some. And I don't even know if I could have told you who directed it at that time. And that's <sighs> right. 
why he's Stanley Kubrick. You know, it didn't matter if you knew who he was or what. It's like you knew you were watching something special from the second it was uh, turned on. And the reason I know that it was that I was 13 is because at the end of this road trip, like literally the last two hours of the trip, we were in Colorado Springs going back. And I realized that the whole point of this father son trip was for my dad to tell me it was okay to masturbate. And like, so he had been like, he had been <laughs> what? Like, like lying in wait, you know, which was a sweet thing. You know, it was, it was like, okay, Zeb's getting to that age. I've got to tell him that it's like, you know, that it's okay. Everybody does it. But it's like, we were driving home and suddenly he starts bringing up this subject. And I'm just like, you know, it starts like dawning on you. And then you start doing the math in your head. You're like, oh, oh, that's why he wanted to go on this trip. That's why. How long has he been sitting on this? Like, how long has he been broaching this issue? And then you just sit there. You're like your entire body freezes, you know, and you just disassociate until he's done talking. And then both of you just pretend like nothing was said for the rest of the trip. Man, that was at the end. Well, yeah, I mean, so was God he was dropping clues beginning. all throughout? All I don't the... think so. I think that he... Okay, he just kept his powder dry. He oh, kept yeah. his powder dry. I'm sure he told my mom what the plan was, and uh, they hatched this scheme, but uh, was not appreciated. I did not... It, it was brutal. Because, because I will say, like, the... There was never any discussion... There is just discovery as some visual aids, right? I think a lot of young men um, either get something purchased for them, right? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't heard a lot that. of people who are like, yeah. Uh, I haven't heard, like, I think Bampo actually did. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, he's just like, here you go. And it's like, <laughs> and then you just kind of figure it out. That's what happens. Um, but uh, God, how many people out there? Tell us in the comments. <laughs> share your story about or the we time edit your this father. out, or you we got... or we edit this out. No, no, this is great. This is great. I mean, this is great. Got tell a us whole, about it in the comments. Whole trip out of it. I got a whole trip out of it, and you know, yeah. it could not have been less appreciated or more uncomfortable. But looking back on it now, I'm like, oh, the, I understand. Like my dad was super religious. I'm yeah. sure That's that wasn't right, like. Though. Yeah, that I'm has sure to that be contextualized. E yeah, that wasn't easy for him. It was. Can like, you tell us real quick though? Like you say, super religious, but it goes well beyond that. Like, what did your dad do? Well, he was like a. Uh, I call him like a Christian Tony Robbins. You know, he had like a ministry. He would go. He traveled all over the world and would go to churches. Um, in the middle of nowhere, he would have. Um, so right. he would, you know, like people supported him. He would go to conferences and sell books and then the money that people donated he would like distribute that there, he was supporting uh, my mom still does it through the ministry supports a lot of uh people in third world countries so, right so yeah it was a big part of his life so I, that probably wasn't the easiest thing for him to do um so looking back on it now i can you know it's it's like cool that he did that it did not feel cool at the time it felt like and just like did not want to talk about that did not want any advice at all from my dad but <laughs> the advice the advice yeah you don't ever want to have like that conversation you know there you don't want any details no you don't, don't want to let's just all pretend like it doesn't exist no, because you don't you don't want to you don't want anybody to ever see that, you know, like that is just that's your own thing, you know, and you just kind of got to figure it out. You kind of have to figure. I mean, like. It, it's great that he told you, you know, within the context of, like, he, well, I mean, he, especially because and he just told like, me it was like, OK, you know, he wasn't. It was OK. Me, yeah, yeah. That's all. He yeah. Said. He wasn't he wasn't like trying to, like, tell you the machinations of it. Right. Yeah. But just and the I fact didn't that like. Him. And you didn't believe him. So, so let's, but let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, cause it's really a comfortable thing to talk about. Um, so you were 13 though. Had it happened yet? I don't think so. Okay. 
what, what at what age did it then happen? It would, it would have like been how shortly long after? after. Shortly after. So once once that talk happened, you're like, okay, that it says it's okay. No, maybe it had. I, I'm, I can't. It probably remember. had. It probably had. Yeah. Yeah. Thirteen probably had. You know. Yeah. But that's uh, that's, hey, that's what we do here on this podcast. We we, do. we just we. Well, bring, I felt we like these... when yeah when I started trying to try to nail down when it was beautiful. I remembered moments. it was that. It was Let's that talk trip. about Dune. Let's talk about Dune, and then let's talk about the time my dad told me it was okay to masturbate. I mean, we have had some coming of age stories the last two episodes because Rosie was on last week, and she certainly had a. a I love tale. it. Um, and now we've got Zeb's. We got this. Um, so thank you for being so open, Zeb. Well, I I definitely regret it. <laughs> and I'm asking myself if I should have just holst- yeah. kept that in the holster for sure. Well, I not to change yep. the subject because you can always go back to the first time you masturbated and <laughs> please, if you want. But and he I, will. Yes, this is his show. He gets to do whatever he wants to show. But I right. do have to say that just because it's been brought up today um, about a movie that just like sucks you in and you can't walk away. Recently, I've seen two movies from the past I've watched in the last couple of weeks that mm. did that to me. And I just wanted to throw them out there for the two of you. Okay. The first one, um, I, I so I have a little TV v, VCR combo in my dressing room and I've got some VHSs that you gave me, Justin. Nice. And the other day. I watched uh, Mrs. Doubtfire at work and my God, that is a perfect on VHS on VHS on VHS VHS. and you, me and mom saw it in the theater together, Justin. I remember that. And that is a perfect movie with, I, it's like, obviously I grew up with Robin Williams and I know, like, I mean, he made me laugh all my life. And then once he, and in dramatic roles, I, you know, I was able to be like, he's so fantastic. I just want to say that watching Mrs. Doubtfire last week, like no one, I, I just, no one even comes close to being able to do what he can do. Like not only was he killing it in that movie as Robin Williams, mm-hmm. but then he's playing Mrs. Doubtfire, which no joke is like a soothing woman. Like, I mean, like very soothing and this wonderful caretaker to these children. And, and he's also being hilarious as Mrs. Doubtfire. Like he's wonderful. He's nailing the accent. Like I said, the voice is like so soothing. And what then kind of voice is it? Is it like an Irish English? Um, oh dearie. Yeah. It's like, it's What's like a little name? Irish. Gemma like, made a Doubtfire, my dear, my dear. <laughs> so they, dearie. My, my I dear. I can't remember what her. Her first name is, but but um, I, I can hear it in my I can hear it yeah. in my head. It just it's Euphigenia Doubtfire. Oh, yes. Won't you please come in? Thank you, dear. It's like a little like it's like a run by fruiting. like a little Irish and a drive by fruiting. Yeah, <laughs> it's a drive by fruiting. <laughs> I saw him. I can't believe it. Yes, Euphigenia Doubtfire, my dear. I don't know. It's so soothing, but and it's also so funny. The movie's so funny. So that's my first one. I, you feel that way, obviously, Justin, that it was killer. You know, I think that was Robin Williams, Pierce Brosnan. Mm-hmm. Before 007 Days? I yeah. think so. Because that was one of right my after... first Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan moments. And I didn't really Sally know him. Sally Fields, right? Mm-hmm. She, was the, she was the wife, right? Yes. And okay. their dynamic, like, it's really sad. Their di- divorce is super sad. And when you're little yeah. and you're watching it, you know, I remember being like, she's so mean. Like, he rules. <laughs> and then as an adult, you watch it and it's like, oh, no, I see. He's kind of a fuck up. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but that one truly sucked me in. And then uh, while Zeb was out of town, Goodfellas was on. And my God, mm. speaking of cinematic, every scene in that movie is beautiful and so well thought out. And 
I, I was I, I saw that movie when I was so little and I liked it, but I there's no way like cinematically I could have felt the way I do. No, now. I don't no. think that movie ever stops. You know, it's there's those cool parts in movies that start. Yeah. And there's they're telling you about the world and you're absorbing it and you're like, oh, this is great. And then then that first five or ten minutes stops and the, and the movie starts. But Goodfellas is just that. 10 minutes and it just goes for over two and a half hours or however long that movie is. And yeah, it's just, just keeps moving. Yeah. It just keeps filling out this world and giving you new information and just never slows down. Not once. It's incredible. The only, I think, uh, oh, go ahead, Justin. oh no, I, what I'm, I think the, uh, that movie recently I've watched a couple I would know I revisited Sopra the Sopranos. Okay. So I work and then I'll have the Sopranos on. And so I'm just like, cause it's on HBO max and, um, it's got all the seasons, you know, I've just been kind of catching up on it. And Michael Imperioli, Imperioli, spoiler alert, he gets shot in, uh, uh, Goodfellas. I'm pretty sure he's the guy that like gets shot. Cause Joe Pesci gets pissed at him, mm -hmm. you know, the kid, um, yeah, he's that. Yeah, and I, I, pretty sure that that's the, that's the case. And then you just like, yeah, it's like his camera's constantly moving, and it's slowed down, like in these like past movies, like a uh, movie like uh, The Irishman, very locked down. But back then, he was still Scorsese, still had like all the tricks he was doing. So it was, yeah, it's impressive, and it's you know, it's one of those things. It's it's kind of like. It's kind of seductive, you know, it's kind of uh, it's one of these things that like people are pissed off, you know, in the Sopranos, like in the first season, people talk about how like pissed off they are that like Italians are represented as mobsters because there's only like 3000 mobsters like in America. Right. But there's such this there's such a focus on mm -hmm. <laughs> these yeah. people and Scorsese, you know, and I think probably because of Scorsese, you mm -hmm. know. You know, he yeah. just, he, and, and obviously like the Godfather movies too, but like, you know, there's just this a whole generation um, of filmmakers trying to make Goodfellas. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Really trying to like, I mean, Boogie it, Nights is trying does, to make Goodfellas. You yeah. Know, it's like, yeah. Gla glamorizing, glamorizing kind of like this, these people. And then, well, I feel like the Irishman was sort of the book into that. Mm -hmm. Right. If everybody, anybody's in the Irishman, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I feel like as kinetic as Goodfellas was and as sort of like sexy, it makes that life is, even though there's some, a lot of tragic shit that happens at the end. And he, you know, he doesn't, he tries to like make it seem like it's a, a bad thing. Irishman really like makes it seem pathetic, mm -hmm. you know, in the mm -hmm. end, this, this life and this arc and how it just destroys your family. Right. Um, so yeah, so Goodfellas is, uh, gosh, I mean, 90, what, like 90 mid nineties. No, early. I was like ninety. Is it early nineties? It's like is 90. it Was it ninety? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Just I like loved, shot out, shot out of a cannon. That movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love too that it's obvious that Scorsese. You could just tell the way that the scenes were filled out with background. You could tell that he had like a very rich, colorful life. Not rich, like. Mm -hmm. money wise but like that he grew up around so well, many characters because you can tell that he cares what his scenes look like you know that each person should stand out from the next in a different way mm -hmm. and and I really like that I could just see like oh his backyard was always like full of something going on or he got pulled to a lot of his parents things or like church things what you know like he just you can tell what an observer he was as well I I heard, I heard, and and I this might be wrong, but I heard that he was a sick kid, so he um didn't go out very much. <laughs> okay. Seriously, no, no, I'm I'm not I'm not joking. What, but what where he could go was the movies, right? And back back in the day, you could go to the movies and you could stay at the movies all day, right? And so he never really went out, and we'll have to fact check this, but he never. <laughs> He he did, no, but I'm serious. Like I remember hearing this from like I a mean, like I'm an interview. I hope, he's, I hope he sues the shit out of you guys. <laughs> Both of us. But he he's was like, like I, I hope I he was a track star. A, yes, 
exactly. Why would yeah, I, I would sick. invent this? I wouldn't invent this. I'm not. Try, I'm not. I'm not I never trying had so to much like as go a cold. I'm not trying. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that yeah, he had some like he had some sort of medical condition like that he couldn't go out very much, and he just watched a in like. I feel like almost like he, you know, like we were at Mamos and like we were just on that island and we could only mm-hmm. like watch TV because we couldn't really go outside very much. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't really much to do. And so it was like, you know, yeah. let's watch planes, trains and automobiles for like, you know, 200 times. Mm-hmm. Right. That yeah. was the same thing with him, except like I said, you bought a ticket to the movie that and you could just stay yeah. back in the day. You didn't have to leave. It wasn't all these. It wasn't. It was one screen. Right. Yeah. So you're just constantly watching. So, um, yeah, he and he's famous for, I think, saying like it's like. Uh, he's he he was one of those guys who saw like every single movie like ever made, you know, because mm-hmm. he was just in the movie so much. So he's like, you know, so, kind of like stealing from the movies that you never saw. Most yeah. people never saw. So he was taking all these little tricks and all these this amazing stuff that for movies that people never saw. And there was all this innovation that was happening. And he basically just was like, okay, I'm going to take that. 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 And that's where he, why he became a film professor at NYU. Um, Cause he was a film professor at NYU and, and he then parlayed that into uh, doing raging bull. Sure. And he was Texas sick Carver. all the time there too. <laughs> well, it's a different type of sick. Uh, yeah, uh, Heidi, how do you feel about having Justin take a stick of dynamite to your theory? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to make sure that like, the record was the record was me, straight. It seemed like watching his movies, it seems like someone who uh, grew up with Ex- a really like, you know, like I said, yes. rich, lush, varied uh, community of characters in his life. Big family. But maybe he didn't. Yeah. I don't think that he actually did. I could be <laughs> wrong, but I don't think that he actually did. No, but that, but, but, but what is, what does that tell you? What does that tell you that w- we've talked about movies as teachers, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, and how they can sort of like, uh, um, fill in yeah. for that. Yeah. And there's the proof we think we think Maybe. Zeb, I just saw you took another hit of the gummy nerds. They're so good. They're right? good. Yeah. yeah. They're really you- good. Everyone's got to go get themselves some of these. Now, you know, that could easily be your your That's So Raven for tonight, which Are is... Are we going to move into That's So Raven? Yeah. We're going to move into it. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance minutes. to talk about... I never. I didn't even... I, all we talk about is masturbation. I didn't get a chance to talk about Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> like, you can talk one, about him? Yeah, what was his health as a child? Uh, Stanley, uh, Stanley was one of those guys. Stanley actually was a guy that went out and, and, and saw the life because he was a, uh, he was a photographer for look magazine, like at the age of 18. So he was traveling all around New York and he was, he was kind of the opposite in many ways of Scorsese. Like he was, he was going to fights. He was viewing all that stuff and he was, um, yeah. I mean, that was, that was his shtick. Stanley was like a true New Yorker in the sense that he went out and he like was documenting the world. And, uh, you know, you can really see that I think come to bear in his movies. He's, there's a lot of symmetry, right? Especially in that, that first section of, uh, of, uh, um, full metal jacket, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of symmetry and a lot of order. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Arlie Ermey, I think Arlie Ermey famously was the guy who was supposed to train the guy who was supposed to be the drill sergeant. Yeah. And, uh, and he's, <laughs> in Stan, Sa- he's like, he's in saving uh, Silverman, right? God, maybe I, I don't remember okay. that movie at all. <laughs> saving Silverman. <laughs> Harley Ermey, that's what you reduce him down to. That's the Saving Silverman guy. <laughs> he was in this iconic, iconic movie about the Vietnam War. And he was like, what was that? Like Jason Biggs and yes, uh, Jack, Jack Black? Jack Black and Steve Zahn and Amanda Pete, and it's friggin' hilarious. Oh. And Neil oh. Diamond. Oh my God. But I'm pretty sure he's in Saving Silverman too. So if you liked him, probably. In- 
Full Metal Jacket. You'll love him. He did the Arlie Ermy thing. He did the Arlie Ermy thing. Yeah, I think it's like him. in pretty much every movie. And that's how iconic that role is. But know? I haven't seen Full Metal Jacket. Zeb, you said you'd show it to me. I will show it to you. Holy shit. Wow. And then we have no to Dune, do no a Full family, Metal Jacket. A family showing Justin of because Zeb and I still haven't seen Barry Lyndon. And I know that that's a big one for you. Barry Lyndon. Holy shit. You want to talk about a movie that is completely and fully realized. Mm. Um, I've seen that movie no less than 20 times. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, Zeb, no. Shut up. Zeb, I don't even, I don't know why you're fucking laughing because <laughs> If you've never seen Barry Lyndon, like, no less than 20 times. No less than 20. I'm not joking. I believe him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a long movie. So I've like spent a considerable amount of time and energy. But that is a movie <laughs> that is. It's just absurd. <laughs> that is a movie. Listen. Give him his props. He wanted to make Napoleon. He due. wanted to make. He, My yeah, brother he wanted, has like, spent. A considerable, a considerable amount, amount of time and energy on energy. Barry Lyndon. Yeah. That's right. So appreciate on Kubrick him. just in general. <laughs> okay. All right. You just like laughing, laughing at my 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 sin assed like tendencies. Passions. Um my passions. Um oh you'll get yours, Wells. <laughs> just you hold on. Um but no, Barry Lyndon, like uh um Kubrick wanted to make Napoleon. He wanted to, he like had this, this unmade manuscript or un, unmade, um, um, movie that he was trying to get funding for. And he had like all of this. I mean, he was just one of these guys who prepped, 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 prepped. And it actually came out. I think Tashin did this like amazing set of books that had all of the production design and the screenplay because he was really obsessed with telling like the life story of Napoleon and it just didn't happen. And so instead he rolled it over into Barry Lyndon. And that's why Barry Lyndon is as well realized as it is. And he was, um, Barry Lyndon is one of these guys, one of these guys, uh, that was, um, he was trying to climb the social ladder basically. Um, and one of the things that he did early on is he was kind of like the, uh, courtesan or some or like you know the helper of a guy who would like uh uh go into these um chalets and these um uh castles i guess and host um uh gambling parties and these scenes are shot at night and they are all lit by candlelight and this is another thing Technically, what Kubrick did was he used these lenses that had never been used before, that the glass was so fast um, that they could be lit literally by candlelight. And it's one of, I think, like, you know, in, I mean, I'm sure that the technology has, has caught up by now. Um, but he, all of the, there were so many shots in that movie that look like paintings because wow. it's all natural light. Um, and it's painterly. It's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, Zeb, I have <laughs> watched no that movie and, 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 and researched it a lot and know quite a few things about that, but you, 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 you know, you take your pot shots at me. It's fine. It's fine. I really want to see it because I know that you love it so much. We should, and, we should, yeah. and we, sh we should just, we should get a screen and we should do a screening of it. Like we did over at the, uh, with mm -hmm. planes trains. Yep. We'll do it. It's so this weird though. Cause it's like the last one I haven't seen. And then once I see it, I'll have seen them all. And that makes me sad sometimes, but, but then we can rewatch them like together. It's so good. I feel like that's true. We haven't seen a lot of them together. Yeah. It's so good. It's really, really good. And it's, you know, it's like, it, it takes its time, but, um, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. And it's one of those movies that like, that's the one that nobody's seen. That's the Stanley Kubrick yeah. movie that nobody's seen. And um, oddly, because I really. Sounds like you. I don't know. I think it's his best copy all the time. 
no one else had a chance. I think I owned it at one point because it was two tapes. <laughs> he just keeps. It was going. one of those. No, blows, I, he just blows right through my joke. It just keeps going. <laughs> Just because it's it not funny comment. because it's not funny <laughs> that's why i just blow right through it because it, if you have to like give give uh you know explain the joke it's not it's not very good so um no i purchased barry linden uh two tapes and uh two tapes and uh yeah I, but that's another one i think i've maybe seen i think i've seen it on the big screen once that's it so it'll be awesome to see it on the big screen. yeah we'll have to find it yeah now does anybody does everyone feel fed does anyone have I mean, anything we passed else? an hour we passed an hour okay. i don't know do oh, you mean do do i do we feel heard do you yes. feel heard heidi i feel like we haven't heard from you very much in in this episode well that's okay you know i'm actually okay. grateful i'm a little tired we had a show this weekend so i'm glad that we had a yappy guest tonight <laughs> um and you know i if you don't see the movies then you suffer on the show and i didn't see the movie that's true <laughs> that's so, true would have been great would have been great to know what you thought of dune maybe we'll do another mini sode yeah once you watch it and so all I really got to contribute, and that's my own fault, I got to get my my kicks in with Mrs. Delphire and Goodfellas and a little bit of Gummy Nerds Clusters. Um, but it was nice to hear about the first time my husband masturbated and that. No, and, that's you know, not what the story brother, was about. And that's then my brother, you know, talking about. to him about it, too, and hearing that my grandpa gave him <laughs> pornography. It was like, cool <laughs> for me. And this is a good day cool. off for me. Cool. Um, <laughs> So it wasn't just it wasn't just Bampo. And that's great. And that's an, as far yeah. as we need to go. Um, yeah. Please edit that out. So bringing us uh, bringing us up to date full circle. Zeb, we do a segment here called That's So Raven. The first time you were on, it was just called What Are You Obsessed With? But now we call it That's So Raven. So yeah. what are you into these days? What am I into? Oh Jesus Christ! I got nothing. You didn't, just you didn't have just anything working. prepared. No, I I got no. I got I'm just no working. No prep materials. No prep. Time. I got I'll nothing. I'll start, Zeb. I'll start. I almost didn't get a link. Oh, you're trying to sell out, John. No, no, mm. I would never, yes, John. Yes, you are. No, no, that's not John's. What a messy, messy affair this has turned into. <laughs> it's turned. And you're two, the, your two Christ. biggest We're fans, lose our John producers. and Catherine, and then you I take was, a shot at John. I was backed into a corner, and I started swinging. And I'm sorry I clipped <laughs> me, John's chin. That was not the intention. What am I into? Do, well, Zab, I'll I've, do a joint a one. Lot. Joint one for us. Because I'll start it, and then you can join in on it. Okay. But right now, we are obsessed with a couple of restaurants in Brooklyn. A couple Mexican restaurants. One of them is called Oxamoco. It is in Greenpoint. Correct, Zeb? Mm. We're in yep. Greenpoint. Yep. And what's cool about it, okay, so it's this like bomb Mexican restaurant. It's Oaxacan. The food's incredible. Ooh. It's like small okay. plates. Um, there's a lot of like vegan inspired dishes, vegetarian, plus there's meat. The, there's this salsa matcha, which is like, the mm. most delicious salsa we've ever had in our lives. There's these guava margaritas that are killer. And it's really special because the chef of it went to Rockhurst. He's a Kansas City guy. So what? Yes. So that That's is crazy. very cool. Um, they've it's legitimately been so incredible. Just flavors that I haven't had before. That's what's exciting is like a whole um area of, of Mexican cuisine that I was just completely unaware of. And so just exploring those flavors, it's incredible. Yeah. So, we, well, we've been like three times. Well, yeah, we've been to Oxamoco twice and then they have an all vegan vegetarian restaurant that we went to last night and that's Zeno in. Yeah. Let me, let me look it up. Cause I don't, what are you eating? Are you eating one of those? I'm Guys? just going deep into these nerds. Like I'm gonna. Oh my I'm gosh! Sick. Yeah. But if you're you in New York, sick. if you're visiting New York, Zy Zylonin, which is probably not how it's. Oh pronounced, my god! But. That is not. 
Ex- <laughs> spell, it, ex- spell it for Justin and let him pronounce it. O-X caca. <laughs> X-I-L-O-N-E-N. X-I-L-O-I-E-N. No, no. X-I-L-O-N-E-N. Zilo. Zilonin. Zilonin. Oh, man. I mean. X-I maybe. is Z, right? Ish. Yeah. Zilo. Anyhow, <laughs> they're fantastic. We Zilonin? love them. You're right. We have been into that. Yeah. yeah. Are you cool with that answer? Seth? Okay. Yeah. That was a that was a joint. You got nothing? Those up? You got nothing? Well, nothing. No, it's like I I work and then I decompress <laughs> watching YouTube. You know, and it's and I hate you, that. I'm, okay. Well, I'm what are you watching? What, what, what you? What, no, what don't YouTube ask show are you watching? watching on YouTube. <laughs> Why not? Why because not? It's all it sorts of stuff. It's whatever the algorithm tells me. What to do you watch. mean it sucks? What do you mean it sucks? Like you have some, you have some shows. We talked about Defunct Land. Defunct Land. I is know, fucking and awesome, I like that. I'm not right? saying YouTube sucks. I'm saying some of the things he watches on YouTube suck. But I don't want to. I don't want to dog anybody. Wait, wait. It's part. it's not about it's not about it's not about you. It's 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 Zeb's thing, right? I'm asking Zeb, like what what he watches no it does suck because i because i you know like i like to watch like science stuff or stuff about retro video games but then once the algorithm just starts shoveling stuff at me i don't even know what i'm watching and i don't think those are necessarily bad it's whenever you watch the like walkthroughs on games or something and it's when i'm falling asleep and so i'm hearing like guns and stuff going to bed okay (laughs) so you're again to the retro have you guys ever heard of the uh, angry video game nerd? Yeah, I've seen I've seen his work. <laughs> okay, cinema. <laughs> you're not you're not too interested in his. Stuff. I'm not necessarily recommending his stuff, but I know that he does like the retro gaming stuff. Yeah, I'm um, in that ballpark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Red Letter Media. Have you guys ever seen their stuff? Not since that. Not since the prequel stuff. Oh, real? Okay, so like it's been a while. Yeah, I mean yeah. they do they do pretty consistent videos. They're pretty popular on on the platform. Um, yeah, that's another thing too that I I watch. I just kind of like watch YouTube videos. So, um, you know, just kind of like it's good background noise. But a lot of like, you know what? A lot of sports stuff. Been been uh digging into the sports stuff quite a bit because we've been having some uh <laughs> some issues with our uh, with our chiefs well let's give props where props are due and the chiefs won last night and they've had a lot of adversity this season and you know what (sighs) adversity brings good things and i'm not saying everything's better or fixed but i'm really proud of them they've been fighting i agree so justin what are you into? <laughs> I'm I'm sitting here having a panic attack because John and Catherine week. are going to have to edit this down. But no, they're not going to have to. No, we they're not going to edit any thing in the world because over. this is the show. This is the show, right? I and cannot imagine an easier task is what than people, cutting this down to thirty minutes. This bickering is what people are tuning in. This is what people want to hear. They don't want to hear a smooth cast. This isn't serial. We're not trying to tell some sort of like you know murder mystery. We're murdering each other right now. All right. So this they wanted <laughs> this dysfunction, you know, and these this are these arguments. This is the show, man. Welcome to it. So what, what do you do, Justin? Um let me think. Oh my um, god. No, 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 no. No, I what I'm going to be into is uh I'm sorry, Heidi. I'm sorry. Sarah told me. I'm going to be into some Uggs here pretty soon. I don't know if you're going to be. I don't know if you're going to. I just asked for your foot size from Sarah. Oh, I, I oh. Don't, it's actually not that, Justin. Mm, okay. I'm being serious. All right, so it, okay, sure, you're being serious. But I'm into Uggs. I'm, I'm into your Uggs campaign. Okay, well, sorry, but you're the milkman. So deliver the milk. Like, I think that that's really... Thank you. Really cool. It's very cool. Yeah. It is very cool. Thank you so it, and much. And it's really, 
because I knew I, I know you're not going to like say this about yourself. Um, so um, I will say it. Um, Heidi was asked by Uggs to write a, a couple spots or mm-hmm. a spot. Yeah, four spots. I don't spot. know how many more there are. Four spots. Okay, mm-hmm. so you, that first one was just the first one. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, and with uh, Mikey, and uh, the first one came out recently. You've seen it on her Instagram. Um, it's a pretty big deal. Uggs are a pretty big brand, and like I'm just kind of, I'm excited to see, yeah, like fashion and uh, comedy come together. And uh, you playing a mom, and yeah, it's funny. And Thank I just, you. yeah, I just, I, I thought I, I thought I'd give you a shout out because, like, I thought that that was really cool. And I think, like, I don't know if it's still around, but I think, like, it was probably, shit, was it six years ago that you did that Nintendo spot? Oh yeah, that was a cool yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, where you played a, a mom yet yeah. again, a mom. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and yeah, so it was just, it's, and that was actually played in movie theaters. Yeah. That was like before the movies. So. Thank you, Justin. And I, I, um, thank you. He's, he is also proud of you as well. He just needed to make sure that he said that on the cast. (laughs) That's right. That's right. (laughs) We didn't, we haven't had, I mean, Uggs, if you're listening, um, and you want to sponsor the cast, uh, you know who to talk to. Yeah. Uh, not me. Your so, girl. Your girl. <laughs> the Ugg, the Ugg, Ugg gal. Um, but <clears throat> I, uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, another piece of news, um, that is pretty amazing. Zeb, um, I know that, well, okay, so, so I just want to break some news on the cast. Um, I don't know, what, what news are you breaking? Because I have to be very careful about what I say about what I'm working on. Yeah, well, I know, but um, I mean, this is, we, we get maybe 250 listeners, so I don't think it's going to be like a big, big deal. Yeah, like, but I don't still, think, yeah. I'd prefer not to. But no, but well, like, but so. Babe, um, my podcast and you've always yeah it's her podcast right so like and i've done before. my time on the podcast this you know well we don't even know what <laughs> your he's time gonna, it's you've done your time we don't you've even know what he's time. gonna say so like let's just let my brother do his thing okay we talked about okay. this okay. yeah so let me do my thing okay um so uh zeb has been hired uh to do rewrites for a little uh, movie called. Um, no, I don't. Uh, you absolutely can't say this. <laughs> you absolutely Zeb. can't say it. You can't say it. I'm going to get in big trouble. Zeb. <clears throat> I can't say. I can't say. No, you cannot. You can't say any of this. I can't I've never say. Even heard I can't. Of I can't say. I can't say. No, and especially if they're going to bleep it and they're going to. You can't be <laughs> lip syncing. <laughs> the name of the film. This is a complete disaster. N- none of this can be used. I think I think that is a really like I think that's a really big thing that we need to tweet out. We need to tweet out that um, Let us be the Zeb first. is I'm never coming on this the show again if you break the news because I can't. If you don't edit this out, I'm never coming I can't come on this show again. You might not be invited back on the show because you don't aren't a good guest. Well, <laughs> um, and so I'm allowed to say that you are, and he's he's going to work with um he's working currently with um uh and uh see th- this is all unusable now because you got it you had to be cute you had to be cute and now this is unusable <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think unusable. I think it's still usable. I think it's still usable. I think it's still usable. We decide what's what's going to make it. <laughs> what's going to make it hilarious is all of the bleeps and the blacking out of the mouth, uh, so that you can't really tell what I'm saying. Yeah, but John doesn't want to um, learn how to black out mouths. We they already know how to black out mouths. 
They've, they've Liz, done it to me already. Listen to me. We decide what's usable. And to us, Ooh. you're not usable anymore. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's clear. I can't. My button is grayed out. It says you can't leave while recording. Ugh, right. We, oh, man. Well, Zeb, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We loved having you. Despite no. what despite tearing into you at the end there and all of his masturbatory fantasies. <laughs> yeah. But you are an incredible guest. You're so hilarious. I'm lucky. You're my husband and Justin's lucky. You're his brother. Well, I love you both dearly. <laughs> well, I, I can't appreciate wait. John and Catherine. And are we going to tell, are we going to tell the world Heidi about the, uh, well, we can tell them can later. We? later. When can we tell them? <laughs> a different episode but i don't know are we going to be able to like actually like have an ep like an episode that will be before that yeah is that a surprise i see i'm not sure so we got to just ah uh, yeah well that's okay that's yeah. okay justin Nobody running knows. gun gardener just throw <laughs> I'm it just out doing there it. i'm just doing it that later. can be bleak ask, too ask questions live on air <laughs> like, yeah because this is live this is going out to the the, the uh the the, the remotely.fm feed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Don't worry, Zeb. Your secret's safe with us until it isn't. He doesn't feel safe. Thank you, yeah. everybody, so much for listening to this week's episode of Where We Were When, and we'll see you next time. Bye. And not only are we 20 episodes old, but also this is a special holiday edition of where we were when this is our christmas and look at your little elf back there i've got a little elf i've got a truck i've mm -hmm. got a camper mm -hmm. i've got uh all the gnome for christmas i thought i see uh, a gnome back there you got another gnome right yep, over i see that one there yeah right there and uh yeah and that's it